your unique story, our global audience. Global One Media. Hello, and welcome to another one of our interviews with senior leaders of companies from different sectors to help you, our viewers, to make informed investment decisions. Thank you for tuning in. I am Munir Barazi, your business analyst and host. And today I'm pleased to speak with Barry Bain, a director a director at West High Yield, an exploration company that is currently tapping its properties in Canada for gold and magnesium deposits, among others. West High Yield is listed on the Canadian Venture Exchange as WHY. Hello, Barry. Thank you very much for joining us today. Manir, good morning or afternoon, and uh, it's a pleasure to speak with you. I look forward to chatting and and uh, talking more about West High Yield and our project. Likewise. So let me start by congratulating you on completing your pre-feasibility study for your magnesium or production plant. Very promising results there. Could you walk us through the highlights and key projections in your study? Yeah, it's, uh, most certainly. It's a great question, and, and it's a very exciting, positive news for the company at this point in time. Uh, just as a quick reminder, West Idaho Resources is a uh, advanced uh, junior mining company. Uh, we, we've been around since uh, uh, early 2006, working on the magnesium project. Just to give you a sense, in order to actually find, delineate, and bring a resource to production, the average time frame in Canada right now is, is 13 years. Uh, so it's a long, arduous process, but it also uh, puts us in a very competitive advantage position because we have gone through all of the work that is required to get us to this point of actually being able to mine the ore that has the magnesium in it that we'll talk about. Um, the, uh, the environment and, and there's the confluence of opportunity now with the global uh, issues surrounding supply, demand for critical minerals, and the fact that uh, you know without critical minerals, there's no way that the, the net zero 2050 uh, targets can be met with respect to the reduce of greenhouse gases. It's a very, very important uh, input product, uh, any of those 35 critical minerals that have been listed. So, so for us, we had a PEA in 2013 that identified we, ha we have a tremendous resource. Uh, it's, it's 89 hectares in size where we have in claims. Um, it, it's, the uh, resource itself is a large one rock unit out uh, outcrop. It's an ultramafic serpentine, um, and, and we've drilled and delineated a very small portion of the resource base to come up with both our initial 2013 PA and, and our most recently published updated pre-feasibility study. So the PA in 2013 had, had identified that we you know, have, have approximately, based on, on both uh, recovery, yield, quality of ore, and um, and the pricing at the time per ton, and we had about a one point two billion dollar NPV at that time. Um, so that, that that was more than sufficient to make uh, make a a mine move forward on a very robust economic uh, uh, outlook. But what we further did was we we've, we've taken the process and we revised our process from two thousand thirteen and 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 changed it to. Something that is more uh, has a lower technical risk uh, uses uh, a similar type of uh, process that's been used in a similar type of ore, except we optimize it by adding our own closed leach hydrochloric acid process. And what that does is it, it has little to no CO2 emissions. It's very cost effective. It isn't as energy intensive as the pigeon process that's used in China to extract magnesium, for example. Um, the other thing it gave us was very high yields on our product. So. You know, we we went from a sixty to eighty percent recovery basis of our of our magnesium in the ore to over ninety four point eight five percent. So we have we have a high grade ore. We have a very high recovery now. And in this latest PFS, we were related to uh, we were able to translate the optimized yield into today's market prices and um, and bring forth now another uh, new economic model that's more relevant to today. So, I mean, we, we quickly, just some of the highlights, we used a discount rate of 5% and, and uh, based on 250,000 tons a year. So, so mindful that our, our initial $1.2 billion NPV was based on 1,000 tons per year. Um, the 250,000, sorry, 
um, a million tons per year. The 250,000 tons per year now reflects an $872 million in BV. Gives us a return rate of 72%. And uh, we're using a very conservative uh, baseline price that was done by an independent company out of Europe to get us the best uh, best gauge, uh, $1,500 US a metric ton. So what that does for us is all of a sudden that $1.2 billion NPV that we had in 2003 now translates, if you were to take the current pre-feasibility study and multiply those 250,000 tons per year by four, you know, we're, we're in a neighborhood of $3.4 billion NPV. So the economics have dramatically increased and, and obviously shows the inherent value in this project to move forward, uh, let alone the global need for it. Great work on pushing the project forward and optimizing the processes. It certainly looks very economically feasible. Um, and just to explain um, to our viewers, those projections are based on what production capacity, what will be the annual production capacity of the plant? So, so we're starting off because we have a permit that we're applied for and is being vetted right now for 250,000 tons per year. Uh, what that 250,000 tons per year uh, then generates in an actual uh, MGO, uh, magnesium oxide product, is, is about 86,500 tons, uh, thousand tons, 86,500 uh, 86, tons, yes. So that's based on 250,000 tons per year. Now, our intention is, as we continue to work through and, and demonstrate um, you know, environmental stewardship, good mining practices is to amend that permit to go up to a million tons a year if 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 all is amenable in both in the area and the government. Um, we're, we're, we're very excited because one thing I, uh, I want to mention as well as part of this whole optimization of our process and what we've done is we, we have, you know, 250,000 tons of ore, which we're going to get 86,500 tons of magnesium oxide from. But we we can actually extract usable other minerals out of our ore, uh, and we get recoveries of up to from ninety to ninety five percent plus. Um, and those other minerals are silica. So we have about thirty seven percent of our ore is silica, which is a very you know it's a high grade silica, and, and where that that is required because there's a shortage is polysilicon. So polysilicon producers need high grade silica. And, and that converts into uh, computer chips, which is, you're probably well aware, there's a large global shortage. Uh, it, it translates into computer, you know, glass, sapphire glass. It, uh, it, is, it is used in fiber optics. Uh, so there's a real shortage for silica. And, that, and, and for us, you know, that's another credit towards sale. Um, the, the other thing is, is we only, uh, or we will extract around 0.21 to, to 0.26 in nickel. And as again, that is another critical mineral that is in demand and in short supply globally. Um, and we also then will get some high grade iron. So if you look at it, it our, you know, I guess our total production as well as our contribution relative to waste, we're gonna have a little to no waste product. Uh, we'll be contributing uh, three, almost four critical minerals that are required going forward. And, and it makes the, the, the base case economics even more robust. So, you know, we're, we're going down this path of focusing on the magnesium because that's where we started and where the demand is. But we're recognizing and with the ability of our optimized process to extract all these other minerals, we have, you know, an even an more beneficial project not only from an economic standpoint, but contribution to this whole net zero by 2050. Excellent. That's really impressive production capacity. And, and it seems like you're leveraging economies of scope there. But let me ask you about your cost structure. How competitive is uh, your cost? Uh, are your costs uh, in your industry? Well, I mean, because of the process that we're using, we so as part of the optimization of our extraction process, well, for, let me go back to the start. Uh, we're, we're mining an ore 
that is high grade magnesium to start with. So we have a we have a lot of, of magnesium coming out of it. Some would could be as low as in other other projects, you know, 10, 15, you know, percent, 18 percent. We already have a very high grade of ore there. So our our cost for mining then, as you can imagine, is going to be uh, leveraged uh, uh, positively by such a high grade of magnesium. A ton, a ton is a ton. If you're getting more value out of that ton because of the grading, it's going to have uh, better economics and, and lower your costs. So that's one. Two, we're at surface. So we'll be a strip or a contour mine. We have little to no overburden because majority or a lot of our ore starts at surface. Uh, because of that, there's there's little overburden to move. There's there's no uh, trees or forest uh, to a large degree that need to be you know taken off, um, and and that's a big benefit relative to a lot of projects of today because there's a lot of costs in some of the mines where there's been very strong finds of whatever mineral or ore is they don't have the infrastructure in place and it's all got to be built out. That means you know long roads. Uh, if it's not close or approximate to any kind of community, there's camps that need to be put in. Um, there's transportation costs. You know, it's 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 isolation complexity that all of a sudden some of these other projects have to deal with that increases their cost. In our particular case, we we are already in in an area where we have all of our infrastructure in place. We're adjacent to a highway. Uh, our our needs are to base basically build uh, two kilometers of road off the highway to our mine site and flatten our mine site. Uh, and by, by that, I just mean prepare the actual uh, mine site for some of the sheds and weight scales. We, we, we don't have to move much overburden. We don't have to bring in power because power runs through our property. We don't have to bring in natural gas. There's a natural gas line that runs adjacent to our property along that highway. Um, we, we have uh, approximate labor force because we're in a mining friendly jurisdiction. Not far down the road, 10 minutes away is Trail British Columbia, which tech has a very large facility. 30% of the local economy is contributed by mining. So it's an important part. I mean, there's there's always uh there's always people that you know are looking at mining and trying to understand the impact on their lives if they live in the area. And and our us specifically, well, we're close in proximity to the the uh, town of Roslyn and in Trail, we're far enough away that uh, no one should see the mine or hear the mine. I mean, we're looking at all aspects to ensure that we are as invisible as we can be and, and become the environmental stewards of the land that are required to produce responsibly, you know, a, a critical mineral that's all part of the green process by 2050, all the targets set out. So, you know, how, how does that lower our cost? Well, as I've just said, we don't have to build all those things and we don't have to worry about the uh, uh, the roads or labor force or we've got rail spurs close by. So that's the, the mining part. Now we get to the extraction. Because we put an optimized process on our extraction process using this HCL leach, hydrochloric acid leach, what it does is, is we can recapture and regenerate the acid. So it's like a closed loop system. Uh, and that acid can continue to be used for cycle after cycle after cycle. So that makes it very low cost. Um, the other and limit, uh, negligible CO2 emissions uh, and greenhouse gas. We have one component of their extraction process requires some spray roasting. But we're looking at, and we have already talked with the, uh, the provincial uh, uh, utilities provider who already has natural gas system in place. And they're moving forward with a hydrogen project. So the burner that we will use for that will was is capable of burning natural gas or hydrogen. So we fully expect by the time we're up and running, uh, we'll either be on gas for a very short period of time and then hydrogen. The other aspect of our project, which is very cost effective and green, is the cost of electricity is lower in British Columbia because you use hydroelectricity. Not only is the cost lower, but it's a green renewable resource. So that makes our project from a cost standpoint very low, our structure and cost. And that will put us, you know, in the upper quartile as far as pedigree of product when people are looking to say, I need to, I need to trace my own manufacturing process backwards. And what is my own CO2 trail of the input products that I use? And, and specifically why resources magnesium will be 
if not the greenest project that you can access on the world, one of them. So uh, we're quite excited about that. So from a cost standpoint, we'll be very low cost relative to a lot of the producers and, and we'll be selling what I believe is a pedigree premium product because of where we're already at. We're advanced well ahead of these targets of, of greenhouse gas and CO2 emissions. Wonderful, and, and many cost and logistical advantages there. Yeah. And, and in your study, you mentioned that the plant requires 250,000 tons per annum of ore throughout. Could you also walk us through the current resource estimates on your exploration projects and your ability to supply inputs to the plant? You know, our our, our ultramafic serpentine outcrop that we discovered is almost what I would determine an inexhaustible resource. We have proven out, because you need to do so as a public company, a certain section of that resource base where we've drilled and delineated out to certain size. And, and that right now uh, indicates that we have 43 million tons of resource in place. So if it if it's at uh, 100, uh, 250,000 tons a year, that's an over 170 year mine life. Um, if we go to 1,000 tons a year, it's a 43 year mine life or million tons a year. So as you can appreciate, we, we have no issues with supply. And to the point where as, as this project evolves and people become comfortable with the, the uh, practice and mining that Y is going to use, the greenness of the project, the importance to the world, we may be able to even drill out and expand that resource base. But right now we have an inexhaustible resource uh, you know, to, to suit the needs of this project for the tw next 20 years plus, which is what our NBV uh, um, on the uh, pre-feasibility study we just launched is is built upon based of 20 years, but we've got easy a 43 year mine life, and uh, we're we're excited about this. This resource in size alone is is globally significant. It's a world class size. Magnesium is abundant resource on Earth. You know, it's the eight month eight most abundant resource on Earth. But finding commercial um, deposits that can be extracted cost effectively and produce high grade are not as easy to find. And that's one of the advantages of why resources is because we, we have a high grade at, at the head, at the ore. Our process has a capability of taking to 99.9% .9 purity, which allows us to sell into the many verticals that uh, that are required by society um, and the whole this whole objective of greening. And that's everything from nutraceuticals, pharma grade, hospital grade, magnesium, which is used in a number of procedures and is very important, uh, all the way through various manufacturing segments, which the most topical ones, top of mind, are the electric vehicle segment relative to de-weighting any kind of transportation vehicle, whether it's an aircraft, a car, a truck, a train, a tank, a boat. Uh, everyone is looking to be more energy efficient, whether it's electric or an internal combustion engine, less energy, is required to move lighter vehicles. So that's that's in that area. The exciting thing for, for the segment of the electrification of transportation is the advancement and the, um, the energy sources. So, you know, for mass adoption, you need to find sources that have greater range, higher capacity, longer life battery cycles, lower cost per watt, um, and easily accessible input materials because some manufacturers are being held back in advancing their plans because they can't get the raw materials. So the lithium ion has been the standard battery for a number of years. It's still got some issues relative to safety and, and you may have, you know, everything from iPhones burning to vehicles burning on ships to, you know, the, there's issues with the stability of that, that particular chemistry still. Whereas some of the most recent advancements in, in battery technology, which do include magnesium in some of them, we're quite excited about because they offer a higher charging capacity, uh, better longer cycles, lower cost per watt, you know, all of those those key metrics that the uh, the electric vehicles are looking for. So now we're we're excited. And, and you know, when you ask, it, it, the, the US probably alone needs 20 projects the size of Y resources to fill their demand. So as as far as uh, 
you know, once we're producing, the, the, the demand is there and will continue to grow. And I think the only reason it's not being used more is because the the manufacturers are, are, are reluctant to, to incorporate it until they have a secure supply chain in place. So that puts us in a, in a very good position going forward over the next years. Indeed, and, and it's really impressive, the, the lifetime of the project, and, and the demand is certainly there. Um, Barry, my last question has to do with uh, future developments. Are there any exciting updates that can be important to know for investors and potential customers? I, you know, I, I know that, uh, that that we have a lot of investors that have been very loyal and with us a long time and, and sometimes get frustrated at the pace of which which these projects progress. You know, the the various governments have recognized the need to accelerate the value add, the development of, of resources, because right now with China controlling over 85% of the global magnesium in our case, Russia controls eight to 10%. As you can appreciate with the geopolitical froth currently going on in the world, alternative sources of supply are important. So what's exciting for us is that we believe we have a globally significant resource that we look forward to bringing into production. Um, you know, the the Canada has some of the highest, if not the highest standards for environmental protection of mining in the world. And, and in order to achieve that, it takes time to make sure when a project's coming forward that all of the work is done relative to assessments, uh, um, and and various uh, valuations of everything from wildlife to you know uh, um, the impact of of your own mining processes to uh, the waterways and and so forth and and that's one thing that one of the reasons mining takes so long to move a project ahead. Um, we've been in a process with the government where we filed an initial permit application after doing. A tremendous amount of work to get even to that application point. Uh, in 2019, February, we filed an amended uh, permit in February of 2022, this current year, and and we're we're extremely close to having our permit awarded. Uh, we thought we may be in that position this summer. The uh, government's come back with a couple asks, and and we've taken those asks and we've acted upon them. So. You know, if anything I can say is we appreciate the patience and, and hope the understanding is there of the investors. But one thing you need to understand is we're we're on the cusp of moving forward where any other mining company that says there's a critical mineral shortage, I need to get into this game. They need to start finding a claim, starting with exploration, and have to go through all those environmental studies, baseline studies, technical reports. And, and it's not for the faint of heart. It's... Uh, uh, the company and 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 the founder Frank Morasco has been very diligent and and judicious in his spend on the project and moving it along. And the fact that that's reflected in the fact we have a very small share structure. You know, if people are looking to invest in a mining project and they see the inherent value in return. They also need to look at the shares outstanding in the company because that's going to obviously reflect back in an individual evaluation on each share you buy. Well, companies at this stage normally would be in the hundreds of millions of shares by this point. Uh, why resources? We only have 82 million shares in our flow, 90, 91 or so fully diluted. Um, and, and that bodes very well for an investor and a potential return for them based on our economics. So, uh, you know, there's been lots of, lots of uh, talk in the news about, you know, uh, where do I invest my money? There's there's this interest rates climbing. I'm not certain what to do. There's cryptocurrency that has been an exciting cannabis, all of these various segments, but they're starting to wane. The interest is waning. And not only that, there, there's, there's, you know, there's some loopholes that people are identifying within these that are costing people money. So, so what's a good bet, I think, to invest in these days is, is a hardcore mineral asset. It's, it's physical, it's got a value to it, and it's got a demand profile with a CAGR that, you know, the lowest CAGR over the next 10 years is 6% up to the other reports have been 12. We think could be as high as 15. I think the sky is the limit because all of the critical minerals, but ours specifically magnesium, uh, we can't move forward on a lot of these projects without it. So we're excited about that. I mean, the other thing we do have is we have a, we have a, 
why Resources First was uh, uh, founded and the basis of, of exploring for gold, where uh, we have a number of gold claims that are contiguous and adjacent to our magnesium property. And it's kind of like getting a little option on the side, I think, if you're an investor, is to know that we're the gold drilling program underway. Um, it's got a lot of historical inherent value on our property, just about 3 million ounces of gold taken off of it. It was one of the most gold areas in the late 1800s, early 1900s, North America. And it was called the Rosin Gold Camp. And anyone can look up and find the data, but uh, there, there's there's some of the mining minister, uh, minister of mining journals that date in the early 1900s that say that you know the the uh, some of the rich ore was 800 ounces per ton and up. So at at that particular time, it was one of the most prolific gold rich finds. So what we're doing is we're going back because we have a number of historical holes. We drilled 22 holes. We just finished a uh, another uh, drill program of a another 41 plus hoes this past summer. And we look forward to sharing those announcements. It's again, it's just another little exciting project in peril, but uh, rest assured, we have a project in its own in magnesium, silica, nickel, and iron ore in this, uh, this great resource. And uh, I don't think anyone who gets involved will be disappointed with their near-term and longer-term results as an investor. Well, with your hard work and incremental progress, I'm sure it will be very promising. Thank you very much, Barry, for your for informing us about these updates. We're looking forward to talking to you again and hearing the further positive developments from West High Yield. Bonier, thank you very much. It was my pleasure to speak with you today. And uh, again, uh, we we look forward to any questions investors may have to us directly. Uh, we're WHY on the TSXV and 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 look for exciting things to continue to come. Thank you. Thank you.